super beefy GPUs, Doom being played inside of Doom, and a monitor with 5G millimeter wave? What? Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today's top article is talking about AMD and how they've come out expecting and saying that GPUs are gonna reach 700 watts of TDP in 2025, even though AMD is still committed to reaching their 30X25 efficiency program, which is to have more efficient GPUs over the next little bit. Essentially creating 30 times more efficient data centers centers by the year of 2025, but they are expecting that GPUs are on this up ramp with TDP being slightly steady until towards the end of the last decade and now ramping up to potentially even hit 700 watts of TDP. Now this is in the data center environment and not necessarily what's going to be coming to your PC, but it does indicate that AMD is thinking that more power draw is how things are going to have to happen with the little line down here saying, power consumption is exploding since demand is outstripping the gains. And so the RDNA 3, RDNA 4 architecture are expected to potentially be heavy TDP graphics cards. This is something that we've kind of already been expecting. NVIDIA coming out with a 450 watt 4090, 4080, not 100% sure there. And AMD potentially coming out with something that's closer to 300 watts, but still more than what the current generation is. But AMD is saying that they're not gonna let their momentum slow at all in terms of efficiency gains and that every time they come out with a new architecture, 50% performance per watt improvement is kind of what they want for the next generation, which is really intriguing. I think a lot of the conversation that I've read around this is people thinking that, oh, this is just an AMD and Nvidia trying to create hot and loud GPUs and they're not even innovating anymore, which if you go back just a few generations, graphics cards didn't scale necessarily all that much better just because you supplied them with more power and gave them more TDP. I mean, that's essentially the 3090 Ti isn't that big of an uplift from the 3080 Ti, even though the TDP increase is quite considerable. So actually designing an architecture that can scale effectively at higher power inputs is still an impressive engineering feat. It just likely will mean that in order for you to get close to the top, you're going to need more juice to put into your PC. And so you might have to reconfigure what you think is going to be ideal over the next few years. What do you think about AMD potentially having 700 watt GPUs? Let me know down below in the comments. And people think that Doom should basically run on everything. We've seen it on a pregnancy test. We've seen it on a potato. People are running it in motherboard BIOSes. And now Doom is officially running inside of Doom. You can run it inside a DOS version of Doom because you can run the script for Doom inside of that, which is just, it's, it's, it's the greatest thing you've ever seen. Doom inside of Doom, my friends. One of the greatest trucks I've ever seen was the F-150 Lightning. I actually got to test drive it earlier this week, and it's being found out that Ford now has trademarks for some upcoming EV trucks that they're looking at getting going, including the Maverick Lightning and the Ranger Lightning to potentially convert those trucks into the electrified versions of themselves. The Maverick being a hybrid at the moment, the Ranger kind of being in that mid tier. But after test driving the F-150 Lightning, if Ford can actually get production up to speed, which I think is their major major hindrance at this point. They're not shipping very many of these vehicles. I actually am really bullish when it comes to Ford's F-150 Lightning. I've tested the base model, got to drive that. It's $40,000. There's not gonna be a dealer markup on this one. And it was just every bit as good as I would want an electric vehicle to be. And it doesn't necessarily have that supreme price premium that we've been seeing on EVs. Like if you wanna go with a regular EV sedan or crossover, they're tending to be in the neighborhood of fifty to sixty thousand dollars, a forty-one thousand dollar out the door price, and then you get a seven thousand five hundred dollar tax rebate. Woo! Looking, look, it's just spicy numbers, good spicy numbers, which is what crypto stonks is. Let's get into that. Bitcoin's down four point five percent on the day to be at nineteen thousand five hundred seventy-one dollars, creating ring below. 20 grand, Ethereum down 8% on the day, still above $1,000, but only at 1050 with only a market cap of $125 billion. Dogecoin down 5% to be at 6.06 .06 cents. But it's probably all this crypto falling is because of Prime Day that's going on 
right now. Amazon's selling things on sale, all of that, but that's why we have UFD deals to bring you the hottest tech deals that are out on the internet. If you were following UFD deals yesterday, you would have seen that Reese was updating the website on the regular to make sure you have the hottest tech deals. And now Reese has got more hot tech deals on day two of Prime Day, don't you buddy? He doesn't ever hear me because he's in South Africa. He records it as a different time. It's just, I, I love Reese, but he, he can't listen to me. Hey friends, Reese here bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys had a good Prime Day. There's still a ton of deals left over and if you're quick enough, you can pick them up. We have the Sony WH-1000XM4 wireless noise cancelling headphones going for $228, which is $121.99 off. Then we have the EVGA Z15 hot swappable mechanical keyboard going for only $39.99, which is 90 whole dollars off was 69%. Nice. We also have the Samsung 980 Pro M.2 SSD. This one terabyte version with heatsink is PS5 compatible. It's going for only $139.99, which is $90 off. I will say the two terabyte version is also on special at the moment, but the price is fluctuating quite a bit. And also we have the Cooler Master NR200, which is their signature small form factor case, which is currently going for $63.99 after a $20 rebate. You can find all these deals and more in the link in the video description. Cheers. But that's not the only deal. I bet you Reese isn't telling you about the fact that GPUs are now under MSRP here in the United United States, specifically one of the most concerning ones, at least when it comes to NVIDIA's bottom line, is the RTX 3090 Ti being on sale over on Best Buy for only $1599, which is a $400 discount. We'll have a link in the video description in case you want to pick this up, but it does seem to indicate that NVIDIA is trying to offload these if they're willing to let retailers actually sell these below MSRP. We're seeing this more and more where these graphics cards are becoming cheaper. There's plenty of GPUs I saw over on Amazon that that were below MSRP, it does appear like we are in a new era when it comes to GPU pricing. And while well, Nvidia is having to slash their prices in order to make things work, Peloton's having to slash their vertically integrated setup when it comes to their products that they have. They're now offloading the production of their bikes and their treadmills because they can't do it. The Apple way doesn't necessarily work for everybody where you vertically integrate every single part of it. Peloton shipping it off to third parties and then just going to essentially produce the service, which is the classes and all of the streaming technology that they have with regards to that. And while Peloton's struggling on that front, SpaceX is struggling on a bigger front because the Starship latest test booster went boom boom. It exploded. NASA saying, uh, hey, uh, holy moly, that was unexpected. So if you watch it, the rocket booster exploded. Not so good. SpaceX saying that this was supposed to be ready to fly to go into a potential orbital flight this month. This is likely going to set it back. They have to do some investigation on the Starship to exactly see what went wrong, how much damage is there to this Starship, and the way to get to Mars is not gonna be through this specific vehicle. Would I say that it's space exploded? Yeah. Yes. But that's not the only space news we got. The James Webb Space Telescope now getting all of its first official images unveiled. It actually happened in a press conference initially by the White House and then a further press conference by NASA with all of the details of the first batch of full color images coming from the latest Deep Space Telescope. And boy, howdy, they did not disappoint. So you can go over to the NASA's website. I highly encourage that you do this so you can view these in full resolution. But these are stunning. The Carina Nebula, Stephen, Stephens Quintet like Southern Ring Nebula. This one is amazing because if you look at the right side, this is what Hubble captured a while ago. And then this is what the James Webb Space Telescope is capable of right now. And just the quality of resolution, the time it takes the James Webb Space Telescope to get these images is completely different. They also got the atmosphere composition of a hot gas giant exoplanet as well. James Webb, not disappointing. Honestly, one of the biggest scientific instruments to have launched within several decades. It is quite impressive. The fact that it was delayed for so long, but then is now performing as far as they're communicating flawlessly. This is very exciting time to see all of this space stuff, but you're not going to be able to see it through a Nikon DSLR anymore. As they say in South Africa, Nikon, that's not Nikon. Nikon. Anyways, it looks like they're going to be switching over to mirrorless. However, Nikon responding saying that uh, there was a media article about their withdrawal from the SLR market, and that is unsubstantiated, and Nikon has not announced this, so stop it. Okay, so it could be happening, it could not be happening. But what is happening is gaming monitors with millimeter wave technology, Red Magic announcing a 27 inch 4K, 160 hertz, mini LED, 1152 full array local dimming zones 
because this thing appears to be magic. It's great. HDR 1000, good stuff. But then on top of that, it is going to have millimeter wave connection to connect your phone to the display with only 1.7 milliseconds of input latency so that you can actually game on this monitor with one of Red Magic's phones in case you have one of those and make it so that you just, it's speedy connection between, I kind of like it. It seems like a good idea. I like that they're doing it. And do you like me doing episodes of Hot News? If so, hit the like button down below, but I'm done with this one. Don't forget that you can listen to every single episode of Hot News as a podcast. We actually release this on your favorite podcast player. If you check the link in the video description, you can head on over there and subscribe to it that side in case you can't watch a YouTube video on the way to work. Listening to it will work just as well. And big shout out to everybody who is listening to this on a podcast right now. Love you guys. I think I might not. I don't know you. I'm going to see you tomorrow for more hot news. Bye.